Europe is is talking about what happened in Madrid, and uh, I wish we had some players in this pod, but uh, our friend Eric has also daddy duties. Now he's a father of two, and there are of course practices and stuff, so he couldn't participate. Eritas, the, the, Eritas gave me the probably the most serious explanation of missing the podcast. He said that I might die actually if I won't get any sleep because he's oh. still watching the playoffs and you know he's doing all this job. So I was like, okay, okay, I kind of, fair. I kind of can accept that. Yeah, okay. That's so, fair. That's fair. So yeah, but I mean, and, I mean, he didn't sleep for two days, so. That's okay. We didn't supposed to record the pod today. It was supposed to be on whether it was on Saturday. My wife says no, but maybe on Monday then. So that was the initial <laughs> plan. But we can't ignore what is happening and what has happened yesterday. Uh, I mean, basically, mainland Madrid. I was shocked uh, to see what happened. This something like this. I don't know. The last time it really happened, the fight, this big brawl. Uh, so many takes from the situation. Uh, first of all, you could see that coming. I mean, Vincent Poirier's foul already told me that Madrid was desperate, that Madrid isn't taking this well, this loss, and probably knowing that you're zero two, you're going zero for two at home. You need to go to Belgrade to win two games there. You know. Their minds were probably okay. We we lost this series already because one one you can say you, one game to win in, in Belgrade is possible, but going zero two at home and and Vincent Poirier's unnecessary foul really on on punter told me um, this is not going to end well. And punter is smiling when he's going up because he knows they're winning this series. And what happens next? Uh, I mean, punter starts this fancy dribbling. Uh, sham god move behind the back dribbles and 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 Sergio Yui just just loses it. I mean, during his career, you never, I guess he, he never did something like that similar. Um, so it, it, it's it's hard to see a player this caliber do something like this. But I don't, uh, sorry, I don't, sorry, I don't sorry, care. Sorry, sorry for interrupting you, but I believe that Barca fans, you know, will correct if you're wrong in the comment section. Yeah, because... yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> they they will find, they will dig they up will some uh, some history. Yeah, uh, but uh... And, and by, by the way, which is fine because we're not so really into some teams. We don't follow them for like ten years, no. game to game, and just like it happened with some other teams, we might not know some background behind behind yeah. some things. So we just you know have a different angle of, on the thing. So, sorry, so just just wanted to make it clear. <laughs> okay. So, I don't care if punter is dribbling, is doing all that stuff, you know. Uh, you are losing. Take take loss with the class. Uh, this was the main uh, thing uh, Twitter, other other, ba- other other players wrote on Twitter. This was my initial thought, you know. You ne- Sergio Yui has won many times. And... Uh, something like this never happened i don't think happened to him you don't need to make fouls like this when you're losing up by 20 that was your that was his emotions talking and kevin punter can do what he wants uh, all that dribbling uh, you know should not make you foul a guy like this and then it all starts i mean what happens after that is is just uh, ridiculous you know Dante Exum coming in I don't know if he was trying to to do something there to me it seemed like he was trying to separate players but it got out of hand very quickly um Gershon Yabuzeli just doing his best uh, WWE impression you know that was a Greek Roman martial arts move uh and this disgusting to watch you know ha- this to happen on a basketball court? I mean, uh, I wrote it on Twitter. You know, he. I expect him to be suspended for a long, long time. There is no place for such a uh, move on a on a basketball court. Uh, at least for the rest of the season in the Euro League. At least. I mean, this rest of the season they get, they have one game probably. So. Uh, well, yeah. I, ex- I mean, I expect- theoretically five games. Theoretically Final five games, but but that's three games in the playoffs. But that's. I don't think that would be enough. I mean. Um, I don't think that would be enough. I think he deserves to be suspended for much more. Um, you know, there are other players also 
that that uh, deserved to be suspended for a longer time. You know, Matias Lazort, I think as well. You know, doing that. Uh, I don't know how to name it. Uh, what he did to Janan Musa uh, and other stuff, but just I mean, I mean uh, what it, happened it was ridiculous. Yeah, the, the problem was that Kevin Punter, I think he also slapped Janan Musa. I wouldn't call it as a punch or some serious hit, but I think that he slapped Musa, and that's the other interesting part. But yeah, j- just not to you know bounce and jump from one side to another. As a basketball fan from this situation, you could say that maybe Exum's uh, activity in that scuffle was also unnecessary. As you mentioned, I think he kind of pushed Gabriel, no, Sergio Yui from Kevin Punter. Then he got a push from Gabriel Deck. Then, yeah, but you know, jumped in. I mean, everyone is, I mean, is every, everyone is running towards that, you know, area on the court. I mean, Ten players were running when when they saw the foul of Sergio Yui, and you know Kevin Punter going back, which is you know completely normal. Nobody in their uh, minds, in because emotions are running high, thought, okay, this situation situation is going to end there. That would have been the perfect scenario for everyone. You know, no players probably disqualified. You know, technical fouls, maybe ejections, but no suspensions. And but. With the result of the series at 2-0 already, with the emotions running high, everyone was just collapsing there. And it's just so hard to see who pushes who first. I mean, obviously, it's Yui and Punter, but... No, but, but but after... I mean, the some actions were followed and influenced by some, uh, uh, some other actions. But as a basketball fan, I'm really most mad... At Sergio, you you know doing this aggressive foul on Kevin Punter. As I completely agree with you. I mean, Kevin Punter wasn't disrespecting him, disrespecting him verbally or showing some signs or whatever. I mean, it's it's just dribbling the ball, whatever. And to be the player of his status, I mean, of Sergio Yu status, to be at his age with his experience, that was so unnecessary. And he started this scuffle that unpredictable ending the fight starts it gets out of control and take you just walking by even without trying to get players separated and or to calm situation down he just picks up mm. the ball in the middle of the court and watches you know what's what's going on so i mean now i'm mean, knowing what has happened to knowing that he initiated this whole mess, this whole tragedy on the basketball court. I mean, as a basketball fan, uh, after yesterday, I feel so bad, so drained, so exhausted of these, a lot of unnecessary emotions that are not related to actual sports or, or basketball that we love. And, you know, at least Sergio Juric has apologized this morning. I expect yeah. a, quick, a, a bit quicker apology, uh, to be honest. Uh, maybe for all of us, it took some time, you know, to understand what has happened but still you know i just expected some quicker reaction from his side just like on the court i mean initiating this this contact and just walking by as nothing has happened and the funny part is that he wasn't even disqualified and the funny part is that he might <laughs> not face any suspension going forward if they follow their regulations and word by word although uh one article says that uh there are first of all there are serious and minor infringements uh according to yearly regulations and of course for serious infringements uh, infri- infringements you get more severe uh, sanctions and punishments and for minor less severe i mean but you know seri- if, uh, if just another add, pl- yeah just, just to add, serious infringements include physical aggression uh in yabusella's case but also one point says that it also includes any conduct that leads to or encourages violence so, I mean, considering what has happened later, although Sergio didn't throw any punch, he didn't do any judo move, uh, he, he was the initiator of the situation. And knowing the outcome of it, the, the player got injured, first of all. Uh, I considered it as a serious infringement. And, I mean... I don't have anything personal with Sergio Yui, but just watching that particular situation, I feel that, you know, he should be punished 
not as much as Gershon Yabusele, that's for sure, but maybe something close to Kevin Punter or Matthias Resort for throwing these punches because I, I would consider it quite equal for uh, for the final outcome the, that the whole situation uh, and the way he escalated the whole situation. I agree. I agree. I mean, for me, it's a serious infringement because that's simple. A player gets injured in this brawl. I mean, if Dante, if if nobody happens to to Dante Exum, nothing happens to to Dante Exum, or you know, nobody gets seriously injured, this whole thing wouldn't be as big or would have such a big meaning as it is right now. Uh, simply because, you know, you would get probably some technicals, probably some ejections, maybe a one or two, a one or two, three, five game suspension. But to injure a, another player by doing that an unnecessary move, which is, you know, the, 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 the game is stopped, you know. Uh, this is not a basketball move. Uh, the time is not running and to do that and injure another player to me that's uh, that definitely will be the worst moment of Yabuzeli's career uh, I don't know for how long he's not playing I saw your the article that you wrote that a serious infringement could lead up to four years of suspension yeah so you know I'm really interested to see what EuroLeague will decide I as I understand it has to come in the next 24 hours after the game so it should come out today right yeah 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 you're right have you heard any something mm, what what could no, happen not no. yet Be, because uh the whole situation is is also interesting i, I it, can, it doesn't I can have predict- any it doesn't have any really uh you know similar things in the past i mean player no. getting injured is the, the last brawl the last thing new. brawl was galatasaray olympiak olympiak 10, 10 years ago, ago. right and Mirza Begic and uh, I think Mirza Begic was uh, suspended for four games, parenthesis and Pops Mansa Bonzu for uh, Bonzu for free. Something like that. For okay, there were punches that were thrown. It, it was did, physical. Did anyone get, but get injured? I I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Or at least at that potential level that might lead with uh, Atlantic's some case. So and then there's this. You know, they have only twenty four hours to decide. So they're not. I I'm not sure if they're gonna have details of Dante Exum's uh, situation uh, because, for instance, if we know today that Exum is out for the season, that's that's huge. That's that's. I mean, there, there, there was there was a, a rumor, or I'm not sure, a partisan uh, uh, article, uh, maybe not official. I'm not sure that uh, Exum um, got an injury to his one of his fingers. On, on yeah, the but, uh, there was uh, uh, it, there they 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 think that it might be broken to tendon. Okay, something like that. Uh, but just, but, just... but, but it, it, this is interesting process because that's where lobbying might come into play. Because from what I heard, Madrid was not in the best relationship with the current EuroLeague ownership uh, leadership, and at the same time, we have the president of the EuroLeague. Who is Serbian, and there's partisan in place. So I mean, th- it's another side of the story that I don't like. So I, I mean, I I wouldn't I wouldn't give this too much, you know. Uh, uh, I see your point. I see your you point. Know. I'm just I'm just mentioning that what also might complicate the situation and you know put a lot of strange interests uh, in, in, into play. But but yeah, I mean, what 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 is also important to emphasize that usually. The disciplinary judge, or I don't know the specific status of of, of the body that decides uh, the punishment. Usually, there's not much room for inter- uh, interpretation. So mm. they might again. I'm just guessing, and I'm not saying this is the best outcome of this situation because there are very interesting points. I mean, if you look at the picture from the lawyer's perspective, okay. So basically, Punter threw some slaps, punches. Uh, Matthias Lazort doing his moves, getting mm-hmm. uh, physical. Of course, Yabusele. So basically, we all only have three players who threw punches and you know got their opponents connected. Gabby Deck, man. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I try to understand. For me, it was more of a grabbing, and maybe it's uh, treated okay. different from punching. So. 
And the you know regulation says that basically it's a serious infringement, and it means at least three game suspension. And and then you have a picture with Dan Texan potentially being out of the series, let's say, or even for game three, it's already a huge factor. Kevin Punter, Matthias Lazard potentially being out for the series, and you're missing, I mean, three of your top four top scorers in the playoff series, three of their top four players by efficiency. I mean, I can I can name Look. Uh, I can extend the list. It's 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 crazy situation when you think that you know Madrid was who initiated this whole situation, and it kind of hurts partisan war, but at the same time they can get a disadvantage with this potential uh, judgment. So look, this I, is I, ridiculous. I don't know what's going to be the punishment. But the biggest winner in this situation is Barcelona, to me. Okay. Because okay. either way, either a team who advances are going to play Barcelona probably without their top three or four players. It's probably going to be partisan. But if imagine Kevin, imagine Kevin Punter, Matthias Lesor, uh gets suspended for like four games, three games, which is minimum, right? Even three games, it means Even that three if games, they sweep it Madrid, me- it's over. Yeah. The season for them is over. Or or they or they win in four. Let's say their season is over, and they don't have Dante Exum probably who is uh, injured. So you are com- going to the final four to play the most important game of the season without your three uh, of five best players or whatever it is, without your three important key players. So, I mean, this situation could have crazy impacts on not only players, teams, but also on the competition itself. If Real Madrid advances, you know, they wouldn't have a lot of players as well because I expect, you know, these, these, these um, fines to be kind of heavy. So... To me, you know, Barcelona is looking at this situation. They need, obviously, they need to do their job against Jalgiris, but but with the fines coming in, you know, the, I think they're the biggest winner here. But mm, uh, and yeah. another another couple two points, you know, uh, I mean, it's just crazy what happened, and I just hope uh, Madrid players are okay during their trip to Belgrade because. And I love what Jelko Bradovic uh, just did. You know, he is the first, he yes. came, comes out the first with the statement that, you know, guys, fans, I know you are angry and, uh, you know, you are writing all these things on Twitter and I I understand your, you know, uh, anger and, and emotions, but just, you know, be be polite, you know, be, be please... Uh, make Real Madrid players come home safe and, and, and go to Belgrade. But man, that trip is going to be insane to me. And, and just, to, I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, how this series are going to be, go, go forward. I mean, the Jelko Bradovic is probably the MVP of this whole situation, showing some real class. Because all those tweets, of course, they were funny about the... Syria is heading to Serbia and let's pray for Madrid guys. Or if I was Madrid, I'm not co- coming to Serbia. I'm just, you know, uh, giving this series away and just uh, letting it go. Uh, it's funny. Yeah, I know. It's cool. And it's really entertaining. But I mean, to to come out of this statement in such a heated moment, it just showed the class of Jelko Bradovic, which he was actually showing Absolutely. the entire tenor with partisan trying to always to... You know, calm this huge uh, rivalry with Zvezda down in order not to get it outside the court. He always tried to push this idea and to send this message that, guys, you can be passionate about the game, but it doesn't necessarily need to, to get the over the uh, over the line to, to make it violent. And, I mean, when we're talking about the potentially 20,000 people in the stands in Belgrade with that passion, with that support, with that heart. I mean, they took all of these Yabisele things very personal and, you know, they might react very personal and, and sensitive. So, and it's, it's, it's it, okay, it's funny to read these tweets, but if I'm a player, it's, it's not fun at all. If I'm a pro- player traveling to Belgrade and I have nothing to do with that scuffle, with that situation, it's not fun at all when we're talking about some health risk 
you know, security of the basketball player just because of the scuffle, the couple players involved. So that's some real class that Joel Kovaradovich uh, showed. And I also, you know, kudos for those guys who came out with tweets like Kendrick Perry, for, for, for instance, saying that all jokes aside, yeah, uh, you got to be able to take that loss uh, on the chin. And, you know, now you're putting your team season and overall safety in jeopardy. So I c- I'm completely agree with that because, I mean, okay, we, we kind of, we all, you know, put the popcorns uh, from from shelves in the kitchen. Uh, the Twitter is, it was hot. Probably it was the, uh, the best day for clicks and views in the, in the, in the entire season. But then you see, you know, Yabisele doing what he did and then you see family members coming on to court to you know to call him down I, I kind of felt a bit emotional I mean knowing what it means for the family members what they're gonna what they are already facing they have all this hate on social media and I'm not I'm not uh, advocating Yabisele by any means but I just try to get into the heads of his family uh, members and this you know picture of them running on the court to you know to stop Yabisele from potential doing something crazy again it, it was it was a bit sensitive really mm. but you know now you know you have to be able to deal with the consequences I mean he did what he did oh, true and you know there is no way of going back so he gotta deal with the consequences and I'm not talking you know with all this hate that might come towards him or towards yeah. his family from the social media with, with the fine, okay, even with, with the suspension that, that is coming. Yeah, what, what, what he did doesn't deserve some violent consequences as, as well. The, the suspension, you know, making disciplinary decisions, this is the consequences that we should focus on, not, not he something pro- he'll, else. He'll probably, he'll probably get fined as well, you know, with a lot of uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Money, money penalty. So Let's judge him this way, yeah. not in some terrible ways. Uh, uh, is it is it even worth talking about the game itself? I mean, that was already an amazing series, and I'm a, a little bit uh, sad that all everything that happened at the end is taking over. You know how partisan is are playing great, just mm. just too just too good for Real Madrid, and I'm not sure if it's worth talking about it. But uh, you know, it was a great game for them for them. Uh, I, I saw Aralia Weisberg. One great journalist from Israel, from Valle Sport, he, I think he tweeted that Jelko is the only guy who uh, got two uh, away wins at the start of the series without having a home court advantage. I think it was the second time that he did this. And, but this is this with Partizan, with the budget that they have, and with the opponent of more than 40 million euros. I mean, that's probably the most, uh, the biggest comeback. Uh, Home court uh, adv- advantage uh, still. I, I'm I'm a bit confused with my. I mean, I'm a bit slumpy with my English because I opened Gershon Yabisele uh, and and his apology on the Instagram. So I'll I'll read it quickly. I deeply regret okay. my behavior at last night's game. Basketball is about sportsmanship and friendship. My sincere apologies to Partizan, a club with which we have always had a great relationship. To Dante Exum and his family my teammates my club and all the fans that's it that's the end of the quote yeah, that's, that's the least that's, that he could do so that's that's something that you know he had to do so and yeah speaking uh, of the game Speaking of the game, I mean, you mentioned, you know, Jelko Bradovic uh, being the the coach that went 2-0 in a away game just another proof of his greatness uh, I will plug in my breakdown that came out yesterday and you know with all of this happening you know it got completely lost about this series a tactical breakdown so go watch how Jelko Bradovic uh, pushed Partizan to these two victories in Madrid uh, yesterday you know talking about quickly about some tactical aspects you know obviously Tavares not playing made a huge factor I saw I saw how Yamadar can drive and score a layup. I saw how Dante Exum can can drive and score a layup easily, you know, with Yabuzele, with the Anthony Randall at, at the five. Uh, I didn't see Real Madrid as prepared and with as much energy as I thought they would come out after game one loss. 
Miscommunications on simple plays as, you know, Spain pick and roll. That's something Partizan runs at least five, ten times per game. And to miscommunicate on the first time they're already doing it, to me, that's not that's not worthy to be in the final four. Uh, Hezonia and Rudy Fernandez, great intros to the game. I thought they were very aggressive, uh, ma- making some shots. Either though, I thought Madrid was a, a little bit more chaotic than they used to be you know shots quick shots in transition not great quality shots in transition and as a result Gabriel Deck their best uh, scorer in the first game their best option didn't get enough post touches in the first half where they got a 15 or 13 point uh, deficit so partisan were just too good Mm, Jelko kept pushing uh, the same pressure points that were that were working in game one Kevin Punter uh, making tough shots against drop, making tough shots in ISO situations, that pullback move and a free pointer was an illegal one. I'm so glad I put him in my all EuroLeague first team uh, when we did the award show. Uh, and basically everywhere where Chus Mateo were tried to risk, you know, for example, Dante Exum going under, they were making frees. So... The only adjustment I saw, and I was a little bit shocked that Real Madrid made it only in the second half, was the zone defense. Uh, and it kind of worked, and they cut the deficit to five points, but then James Nunnally hits this crazy three-pointer from the side where he's falling down after Real Madrid is scrambling like five or six passes going on there. Uh, really, Madrid was really trying, and that three-pointer, I think, broke the hearts of, of Madrid and you know, that was a super important shot from Nunnally. So amazing game plan from Jelko, amazing execution from the players. And, you know, there is a reason that part, why Partizan is playing so good in the second half. And it's, it's Jelko Bradovic. Yeah. That's good that you pointed all those things down uh, because nobody is talking about the game itself. So, uh, yeah, so I just, I mean, Partizan played two great games. I think it has to be yeah. mentioned. So, that's 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 true and but that's the thing that it's it's just crazy to think that all this all this great run great start of the series might be so much influenced by the potential disciplinary uh, suspensions and stuff and i i believe that you know from from a basketball fan standpoint it would be fair to get let's say i'm not talking about real madrid players that's the separate topic but from partisan side to have Lizort and Panther suspended for maximum one game because otherwise it will just it might ruin their their season and I don't think it's fair I think it, it would be uh, very unfair one game suspension is just like showing that you cannot throw punches at, at players and it's not acceptable but as I said three mm. game suspension means that their your know, season is over and it's just it's just crazy to think about although if you act according to you know uh, words of law, maybe I mean it's it's a difficult topic, you know. But let's let's. I mean, I have five minutes to check out of my flat, <laughs> so let's let's go to another series. It's so s- similar, Maccabi Monaco. It's I don't know, you know, Madrid and Partizan obviously overwhelmed the overwhelmed the Maccabi game uh, in, yeah. in Monaco, uh, and. Actually, I I didn't have a clue what was going on in in Madrid, but I was like hearing. I was working. I saw that you. The- I saw that you were not responding to my uh, messages when everything was happening. So I was like, yeah, he's not watching th- this live. And I was just you know typing the article about Wade Baldwin explaining uh, the situation when he got ejected, and he said that it, he was showing a sign of the flash play, and the referees potentially thought that he mean he he meant that the refs are bribed or something. Uh, and I'm just, you know, I'm in the one of the tunnels of the gym and I'm hearing, fuck, fuck, shit, in the locker room. And I'm like, so, I mean, maybe Maccabi players are re-watching the tape and now, you know, uh, they're getting emotional about some calls or non-calls, let's say. And, and like, fuck, fuck again. And then I kind of understood and, you know, some, Players are uh, are coming out of both locker rooms, leaving to the exit, uh, and and talking about things. And they just say, "Hey, that's crazy what happened in Madrid, right?" And I'm like, "What? 
had really happened in Madrid. And <laughs> then I, you know, I, I, I just entered Twitter and, and it's done. But this game was also overwhelmed by something that is that should be the least related uh, to basketball. I believe that everybody on Twitter, at least from Maccabi side, uh, of course, we're talking about the quality of the refereeing. And to be honest, I think that, again, I'll try to break it down pretty detailed, but I think uh, referee, I mean, the game was kind of a bit unwatchable and mostly because of the officiating. But I will, I will explain you in detail which, which uh, episodes got uh, got to your attention i mean maybe that, that's yeah, that, me, maybe that's hey, because i was watching from you know from the tv's yeah. perspective so that's a good point hey give give you your outlook how did you see the situation because your point is different you watch the game the following morning there are let's yeah. say you know the score there are no emotions and you have this very objective look at the situation which is very important in the situation Okay, you mentioned, you know, Wade Baldwin and getting ejected for this. You know, I thought it was he, he was showing, you know, the money sign that they the referees are bribed. And you are in Monaco and they have a lot of money. So that's, you know, refs could have thought that he was showing the money sign. You also said that he was saying it was a flash sign that, you know, usually uh, coaches have a... A uh, special sign for uh, setup place. You know, they have a five normal set, and they would have five flash, which is some kind of a special option. Maybe after the timeout, he could mention he he could have uh, you know meant also this. But uh, to me, during all the game I was watching, yeah, there were a lot of fighting, a lot of uh, physicality. Maybe one or two, three plays where fouls were uncalled. For example, against Darren Hiller in the post where they didn't call a goaltending against Maccabi. I thought that was a goaltending and a foul before against Hilliard. Uh, after that, you know, Hilliard was grabbing uh, Motiuna's shirt, and but Motiuna's got called for a foul, I think. Uh, on B Bonzi Carlson got steeled uh, uh, against Motiunas. Maybe that could have been a foul. So just episodes going both ways. I did not see... First of all, a lot of bad episodes from the refs. And I did not see, you know, that the refs were going towards one particular team or refereeing towards one particular uh, squad. So only that last thing, uh, the last shot where before Wade Baldwin was ejected. I think Alpha Diallo kicks out that leg. I'm not sure how much contact is there on the hand. And, uh, you know... That forces Wade Baldwin to do these signs and then get get ejected. So uh, the replays were really bad on that play, actually. So on many plays, I I can be sure, you know, that's you know that there was no contact on the on the arm, but I'm pretty sure that he kicks out the leg to the side, and this uh, influences Wade Baldwin to fall over, you know, Alpha Diallo. So you know. Let me give, give me your impressions about the officiating because it might that, have been that, different because you were in the arena actually. And that plays very important part of this whole story because when you are in the arena, things look way worse or more emotional than maybe objectively speaking they are. But because you know, my first initial reaction was like I, I basically started watching replays on on Euroleague TV from the third quarter because. Uh, before, uh, you know, in, in France, uh, without uh, VPN, you cannot watch Euroleague TV because of squeak, uh, because they're right holders and they have some, some rules out there. But I managed to, to get a VPN, Lithuanian VPN. So from the third quarter, I started watching the replays. And a lot of times I caught myself watching Maccabi complaining a lot and watching the replay where the refs are doing a great job. And I was like, man, they're just getting too emotional. You know, that's that's... That's, you know, they're just trying to get uh, reps on their side. But uh, I came back. Uh, of course, there was a lot of mess, a, a lot of talk about refereeing. Uh, I came back at home. I, I rewatched the, the first three quarters yesterday. I finished the whole game uh, tonight. And I kind of understood what has happened. First of all, refs did mistakes. Uh, yeah, but as I you agree. say, on, on both sides. But the biggest mistake that refs did was losing the control of the game 
from the early on. I mean, be, and uh, many things influence the fact that they lost this control. Uh, in the first quarter, you mentioned you already mentioned the situation with Daron Hillard. I think that there was this foul called on Bonzi Colson against Mike James, where he barely touched him. And I personally think that Mike James lost his balance and the ball slipped up his hands before Colson did the contact. So if mm. I was if I was a judge, I think uh, it shouldn't have been a foul call. And then at seventh at the seventh minute of the game, you have to use the coaching challenge to get the ball back because of the referee's mistake. And you see where I'm coming. It's very early on into the game. There are some unclear calls, and you start getting That's emotional. a great point. And Odette That's a great Katash point. is very emotional as a coach. He jumped into referee's face from the first minute. Usually, when coach is emotional, players kind of, you know, start getting that emotion from himself. Then you have this great fan base uh, in the stands supporting you as hell, especially playing away, being against everyone, you know. Home team fans, home team referees, they're, they're ready to, to die for you. They also brought, bring these emotions. And it felt like, you know, both players, I would say both teams, I would say Maccabi was, maybe was more emotional because they were down. This is, because they this were normal. losing. Yeah, I was, they were I losing to add and that. They, 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 they got mistreated in some situations. So I understand that. But then there's this very important thing that comes into play. It might be influenced by the fact that players got confused by the refereeing. But, I mean, what pisses me off as a basketball fan, uh, for first and foremost, that players start, you know, flopping. Players start, you know, tangling up with each other. Uh, they start to escalate the bad officiating even more. And although it was, you know, against their, you know, hope to get a good refereeing, because that's what you get when you start flopping, when you start doing this, you know, dirty contact, you put referee in a situation to make a bad decision because he also gets confused. And for sometimes, you know, I, I'm not saying, I'm not blaming uh, in this particular play. I'm not blaming anyone. But this, there was this particular play. John Brown, uh, John Brown uh, box out Jay, uh, Jay Cohen. At least I saw on, on, on the film. Brown hits really hard. He elbows uh, Jay Cohen somewhere below his neck. That's a painful. That's a painful hit, and I think that there's this history of elbows being thrown out, and especially Jay Cohen being hurt from the game one. At least that's what I saw from my, let's say, eye test. I didn't rewatch mm. those uh, situations in particular, but I saw that something is between these guys. So that's what happens. Cohen, he kind of gets the hit. You can see the pain in his eyes, but he didn't react as much to get the attention from the referee, to get a foul. And that's what he did. That's what he does. After a short delay, he, I would say, exaggerates the foul in, in a way that, I, I'm not calling it a flop, but it looks like a flop. And it, I think it looks like a flop for a referee. So even though Jay Cogan in this situation was right, but because his situation wasn't noticed by the referee, the, the thing that they see is him potentially flopping. So... Even though the Jay Cogan is right, how can you trust him the next time if you kind of thought that he was flopping? And it, it happened many times. I mean, both Maccabi and Monaco players, you know, it, it, what, what's very important to emphasize, there were a lot of good calls in situations where players got mad. And that's another, you know, perspective. If, if you're complaining so much about the situation where you were clearly wrong, where you were clearly wrong, it was a great call by the referee. The next time you're going to come play, it's really hard to buy the uh, respect of the referee and, and, and his stress. So I, I'm not blaming players. No, I think it all started with referees losing the control, then making players emotional. They got confused. They also started doing their thing just to help their teams win. And then we all, all have this escalation. You know, Then we have two players ejected from a car besides six technical fouls. It's been a mess. And again, the basketball side, you know, it's, yeah. it's get, it gets overshadowed. Although it was a, it could have been a great basketball game with the great mental reaction from Monaco. Yakuba Utara uh, setting the tone uh, defensively. You mentioned him yesterday. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned him yesterday and I was like, we're watching the game. Oh, Yakuba Utara is starting. Oh, 
he got a steal against Lorenzo Brown. Oh, he scored the first, the first two possession. threes. I was like, in the first possession, yeah, in the first defensive stops, he heads the tone. Jordan One playing his career game. Maccabi yeah. showing amazing character coming back from being down in the beginning. Later on during the game, and for sure they're gonna carry out this character. Uh, toward the series and to try to clinch the series in Tel Aviv. And I mean, that's another great quality of Maccabi. So a lot of great things happen, but nobody cares about that because, you know, refs were bribed, refs lost the control of, I mean, were bribed. Uh, they lost the control of the game. And, you know, the, the initial reaction we get from this game is that, you know, something was going on with the refs, which clearly did. And, but, you know, you know, to, to be com even completely honest, uh, I just want to say last thing about that game. That was a reaction from Monaco that I saw that what I expected f from Real Madrid immediately mm -hmm. at the start of the game, not after the halftime. But the worst part is you're saying, you know, everybody's talking about how this game was, you know, the refs were bribed and, and stuff. Nobody's even talking about this game, to be honest, I think. You know, everybody's yeah. talking what happened in, in Madrid and what fines, what suspensions are going to come. So that's the... The sad part that basketball is overshadowed uh, in, mm. in, in, in already in round two, and uh, but, yeah. But yeah, let's you know uh, another random thought that is that show. I mean, please, the the ones who think that final four idea is is cool is the best solution mm. for the final outcome of the season. Just 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 bring it on. Just bring it on. I mean, watching these playoff series. I mean, matchup by matchup. It's just some something exceptional, and I would love to follow these teams in the semifinal series and best of five, the final series with all these rivalries. Even you know, putting all those unnecessary emotions aside, with all these great matchups on the basketball court, it's just amazing to witness. So, so yeah, just a random food for thought. I completely agree, and just you know, the thought of a potential matchup, let's say Jesse Karajus against Obradovic in the semifinal in a series. Not in a single elimination game. That that would be amazing. Uh, yeah, so I completely agree with you, but I don't think we are going to get this soon, and that's that's unfortunate. But uh, yeah, I completely agree. I just hope that somehow over the weekend we all will relax a little bit, and you know, and go back emotions. talking about basketball. Yeah, but then there, there will be time. a game free. But then there will be a game free in Belgrade again, and who knows what squads, what roster are playing, you know, with 21 players disqualified yesterday. So, that's just, yeah, that's we, just incredible. Every, everybody needs to relax, but then the next week <laughs> is going to come anyway. Yeah, so. And let's let just stick to basketball, please. Let's just stick to basketball. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we're good for this emergency pod. Uh, yeah. Everything was said, I guess. Yeah, I need to go actually. I'm 10 minutes late. And you need to come moment, back to Lithuania. <laughs> owner of this uh, apartment can come in and say, hey, man, how the Italians curse? Tranquilo, no, tranquilo, something. No. Why, why, why am I putting Italians uh, over there? I mean, I'm, I'm in France right now. But I'm not sure. You should, some you should nice have known Italian already restaurant. some bad words. That, that's because no, please, there's some nice please Italian don't, restaurant on the corner. Please don't do the PJ Tucker. You know, Italian, oh, no, food, no. Italian, food, Italian food in Monaco, <laughs> he said. That's another criminal activity that deserves a suspension, I would say. Okay. No more suspensions, man. No more suspensions, please. So, so, yeah, let's just stick to basketball. Let's put the emotions aside. Let's just prove, show your worth on the court. That's it? That's it. Thank you all for watching us. A lot of contents if, if you want to catch up all the news that uh you know coming from from all those playoff series and even more make sure to follow us on basketnews.com also make sure to subscribe basket news youtube channel press like button uh, below this video share your opinions and comments uh, it's it's really interesting to hear your your thoughts because in many cases you kind of uh give us the background behind some things that are happening since we are not from those countries we don't know some some stuff and, and yeah, just, just join basketnews.com uh, slash plus community, be on plus community to be even closer to, to a lot of things that are happening to get a lot of extra content, including Augusta's uh, breakdowns, uh, some other opinion articles that we have about those things that are happening and interviews, a lot of big interviews. So, so yeah.
see you next week and thank you so much Augustus for being in.